Oh, actually, before we go on to the third painting, let me uh, show you some examples of salt blooms and combination effects in some other works that I have. So you'll get an idea of what to expect when you look at your paintings uh, tomorrow when they've dried. Great idea. Okay. It's so hard waiting till the next day, isn't it? It is, it is. I know one doesn't have a lot of patience sometimes. But <laughs> then again, it's a good excuse to just let it go, do something else, and then a pleasant surprise tomorrow. Oh, good thinking. Okay, so here is a uh, sunflower, uh, an appropriate topic these days uh, with the Ukraine in particular. What you see are some salt effects uh, in the center. Uh, so that can be particularly uh, uh, interesting with regard to sunflowers where you have seeds or a structure developing in the middle. So that's a salt effect. Uh, another salt effect, which doesn't actually make any sense, but I did it anyway, was I painted a pelican and then in the background wash, put some salt and you'll see this is with that brown gray. It might actually have been with walnut ink also that tends to behave well with salt. So you see again, the pattern appearing. Uh, another salt effect would be some flamingos. And in the background here, you have a blue where you get both blooms and salt and the brown where you get the salt also. And here's also another bit of salt. And the last... I love your flamingos one. Strangely enough, oh. I've just painted a flamingo, but not as good as that. Perhaps well, that is... well it's I... all a matter of uh, what you're looking at because I might prefer your flamingos, you never know. Oh, you never know. Well, perhaps if you're watching, you might like to say which of these paintings you like best. Message us that's, in and tell us. That's, that, I'd be interested in that too. Uh, the that. final salt effect involves painting a couple of birds. And off in the corner, you have some salt effects. And uh, I think that's really it. Just added for a little texture and a little interest in the painting. So the salt does not dominate what you see, but it it does contribute. Uh, and then finally, uh, I'll show some uh, works with regard to blooms. Uh, mm -hmm. as, as you'll see, they're not always predictable, uh, but sometimes they work really well. Uh, and I've got some examples of bits that I like. In particular, here's an orchid where what we've got is a bloom, which uh, is basically responsible for the petal of the orchid. So- But did nice you do care. that deliberately? Uh, well, more or less, yes. I was hoping for that, but mm. really, you never know. Lovely, that. Uh, also, you get some blooms. Here's a picture of Holyrood, which is in uh, Scotland. And I kind of liked, uh, this is similar to what you should see, hopefully, in the sky of our second painting that we just did. You'll see sort of a bloom. And then uh, let's see, I got two more. Here's a picture of a tree with the moon and around the moon, you get the bloom. So this was probably, well, I'm not sure which brown this was. It might've been walnut ink. Uh, it might've been burnt sienna. I, I, I don't remember, but you, you can get some interesting features around a moon uh, and a tree. And then lastly, if you look at a sailboat, a couple of sailboats, here was the sky with that mix that of uh, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And when you dropped extra water in at a particular time, you want the paint to still be wet, but not too wet. What you get are blooms, which uh, can correspond to clouds in the sky. Wow. So, okay, so that's, that's it for that one. Okay, so, so now we'll I, go on to, to sure. the third painting. In the meantime, if anybody wants to tell us which of those they like best, then feel free. 